YouTube, welcome back. Thank you for being here. This is the Every Closet. We are full-time resellers on Poshmark Canada, now Poshmark US, eBay, we're just a little. Um, on Instagram, we're very active there and here on YouTube. So like, subscribe, follow all those places, do all those things, it would make me weirdly disproportionately happy for the amount of effort that it will be for you. So thank you so much. So we're gonna focus today on brand research. First, why you should do it, and then six different methods that you can use to conduct your brand research. Um, so let's start off with why. You might be thinking, Stephanie, can't I just look up the comps in store? Why do I have to do like all this work beforehand? Isn't that what I should be doing anyway? And yes, you absolutely should be looking up comps in store, but, if you're gonna look up comps on everything you see in a thrift store, you're not going to make it out of there. You're gonna live there forever. And as much as that does sound fun, um, it's not efficient. And one of the main things I'd like to impress upon you here on the Every Closet YouTube channel is that time is money. The reason we wanna do brand research before we even step foot in the thrift store is so that you have a starting point. You have recognition so you can go this brand no i i know what this is and no i know what this is and it's worth looking into further so if you see something and you know hey this is a revolve brand you put that in your cart and then you look up comps okay so comps is a term that we resellers throw around a lot it is short for comparables and it's essentially a comparison on the platform you sell on so for me, it's mainly Poshmark, but it could also be eBay, Mercari, whatever. Whoever your main platform is, that's where you want to check your comps. It's a comparison of two things. It's first a comparison of the items that are listed currently versus the items that are sold. And you want to be as specific as you can with the items. So say the Lululemon Wonder Under Leggings in size 8 in this color. That's what you're looking up. And for Lululemon, you can get that specific. So if you're looking up, you're gonna to wanna to look up how many size eights of that color are currently listed on Poshmark versus how many have sold in the past. You wanna pick up items that have a much larger amount of solds to those currently available. If you're picking up things where people can pick from a hundred different active listings, you're gonna to have to price a little bit too competitively it's going to be a hassle. Like it's just, it's just not as good to pick up items that are oversaturated like that. Comparables also has a connotation of price. So when you're looking at the solds, you look at what those sold leggings have sold for. So if, for example, Lululemon Wonder Under, say like 76, 43, 92. It's generally usually all over the place. And it also comes with a caveat it's hard because i always go over comps i literally always price over comps why because you can lower prices and so i have the ability to hang on to inventory so i price high and then i just lower it or accept offers it's just the business model that seems to have worked for me but um comps can also be slightly misleading in that if someone sells something in a bundle that item, when you search it up, won't show what it sold for in the bundle. It's going to show what they listed it at originally. So say I sold a jacket in a bundle with three other things and the whole bundle was $60, but I'd price the jacket at $40. That would give you the impression the jacket sold for $40, but since it sold with three other things, you know, it gets complicated. So the point is, you want to look up comps and you want to look up the prices and you also kind of just want to make up your own prices. I tend to list on the high side. There are also business models. I know a lot of people who list on the low side and don't discount much. Um, they probably get a lot of traffic that way. It, it totally depends on how your business model is working. So let's get into how we do the research. And I've come up with six ways, although I'm sure there's about 175 ways that you could do this. And I put them in order from my least favorite to my most used or most favorite method um, because, it's, because it's my video and I chose to do that. Now you have to watch it in that order. Ha! -ha. So... <laughs> 
That's nice. Antagonize the humans. So my personal least favorite, although it's absolutely still super, super useful, but it's probably just something that I don't like doing personally because it's not as like exact, is to follow a bunch of fashion bloggers uh, on their blogs, on Instagram, on Pinterest, follow fashion YouTubers, follow people who are style bloggers or who are involved in the fashion industry. And this is useful to, to learn brands, but it's most useful, in my opinion, to learn style trends. If the Devil Wears Prada taught me anything, the way it works in the fashion industry is it starts from the top tier designers, it goes to their runways, then it goes to people very in tune with the fashion industry, like style bloggers, etc. And then it goes to the popular hip trendy brands and then it goes to the masses and then it goes out of style because it was overdone so that's kind of the cycle you're looking for and the earlier you can get in on a trend the earlier you know what you're looking for in thrift stores especially in thrift stores because a lot of trends are cyclical and come back so just because something's trendy doesn't mean you need brand new with tags item to be like in that brand for example like y2k stuff is very trendy now and juicy couture velour sweatpants came back into style i wonder if me saying this and it's probably already over i'm sorry but as an example that was a thing in like 2002 or 1998 and now it's a thing again in 2021 so that's something you could easily find in thrift stores because it was produced a lot 20 years ago. So it could easily be, easily be something that is found in thrift stores, in vintage shops, things like that. You wanna keep an eye on trends. And I think the easiest way to do that is follow the fashion bloggers, follow people who work in the fashion industry, just kind of surround yourself. Like, and through osmosis, you will learn what's trendy, even if you're really resistant to it like I am. <laughs> One of the things you definitely want to keep a note of when you're uh, consuming media by the fashion bloggers and the Instagrammers and whatever is the hashtags they use or any brands that they tag. Um, fa the fashion industry is really good for this because they all want to cross promote, right? So because of that, they'll often tag whatever brand they're wearing. They'll often um, shout out like a hashtag of like it kind of almost explaining to you what the style is they're wearing. like they'll tag their outfit Y2K. And so you then glean from that. The reason what they're wearing is trendy is because it's Y2K reminiscent, etc. Number five research method. And this one's super useful. Um, what it's super useful for is gaining just a list of freaking brand names that you can then do further research on. So compiling that list is overwhelming and daunting. So one of the places you can start to wheel that down are well there's two apps i have i'm sure there's other ones but one is the real real and one is farfetch so both of these places sell luxury designer goods pretty much exclusively and literally all i do on those is i go and i click each brand name just in alphabetical freaking order it is time consuming it's not the most fun but it gives you first of all an exposure to a lot of brand names and second of all, you know if the real real is selling it, then it retails for a lot. You know if Farfetch is selling it, it retails for a lot. And retail value does not always equal resale value. Absolutely not. Don't let anyone tell you it does. But it's not. They're correlated. They're definitely correlated. So it's a very good place to start. And then what I do is I take those brand names and I plug them into Poshmark. If I plug them into Poshmark and there are one to two results and that's it, I don't go any further because I know that I'm not going to find those things. <laughs> like they're just not common enough that I'm going to come across them. It's nice that I've heard the brand name. Maybe if I ever do f get lucky enough to find it, I will. But I'm not going to spend the time on researching it because there just isn't enough of it in circulation that I'll probably not find it. If I plug it into Poshmark and I see a lot of responses, then I look at the comps sold to or listed to solds and what they're selling for. And then from there, you also want to look at what styles are trending, etc. The real real 
Farfetch. I'm sure there are a lot of other um, things like this that are just curations of high-end goods. And so that's where I go to just expose myself to the names of designers and luxury brands that I would never ever know otherwise. The fourth method, and I use this all the time, is kind of similar to the, to, um, the following fashion retail people. It's follow a bunch of resellers. Pretty simple, pretty much me attempting to get osmosis again through them, their information. So there are reseller podcasts, there are resellers on YouTube, hello. There are resellers, a ton of resellers on Instagram. There are blogs and websites and there are people on Poshmark and you can just message them and interact. But you don't even have to interact, just consume their content. People do hauls and in a haul, you know, if a, one real seller's picking up a brand a lot, maybe it's something you want to be picking up a lot. If they're doing a thrift with me and they're like, ugh, this brand, then maybe you think to yourself when you see that brand next, oh, maybe not. Or may like, maybe I don't need to look this up right now. Um, anything to just make it more efficient. Obviously, what works Brands that sell for one person are not always going to sell for another person. I, I, we emphasize that all the time because like we're here giving you this advice, inundating you with the information that we think is useful for you to know. But we also know that like it changes person to person. So watch a lot of resellers. And if there's a general consensus on a brand, then yeah. Um, I often when I'm photographing clothes, will have my like reseller that I follow on YouTube in the background and I'll be listening to what they say and then like if I need to look at something they're like look here's the tag I'm like oh pause rewind look at that um and I found it's just like a really great way to know because resellers as much as like fashion bloggers and everyone knows what's in style and they know what the good brands are resellers know the resale value and that is what you're after so it's like the first one but a bit more focused into what you want because you are a reseller or you're going to be or whatever. In addition to that one is you should just really be on the reseller Instagram community if you are not because it is an amazing place full of hilarious and inspiring and supportive and just the most amazing community that I've ever found, ever. I cannot emphasize this enough. The Instagram reseller community is baller and you're going to want to join it. Ooh, I have a smoothie. I am so thirsty. Three. Are we going up or down? Three, two, one. Number three is the method that I've been using to compile large bolo lists on my Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that I've made a few of these posts already. And so it's pretty much the impetus for why I wanted to make this video for you. So, um, it is obviously something I consider very useful. It's also very straightforward stepwise, which I love. The reason I do it by category is for one thing, um, just to not have to make a list of 2000 brands at once because none of us would retain that. Me sharing that with you, you wouldn't retain that. Me compiling that list, I wouldn't retain that. Uh, the other reason is because thrift stores are organized by category. So if I kind of have a few of these categories that I've already researched, I can go, all right, I've researched jeans, I've researched jackets, I've researched dresses. I can go to those sections and feel like I kind of maybe know what I'm doing there. Um, and then avoid the sections that I have no idea what I'm doing. So far I've done this for dresses, sweaters, shoes, uh, jackets and coats and men's clothes. Those are the categories I've done it for so far. So go to my Instagram and check out those posts if you want to see what like the end result of this looks like. But I do recommend doing the research for yourself as well. You will learn better compiling a list than you will just reading one. Psychology. I go to the Poshmark app. I go to the search at the bottom. Um, then I scroll down that page for women's and then I click on the category I'm about to research. So bags jackets and coats, sweaters. You can also just go to the top and type in the beginning of that category's name and Poshmark if will fill it in and then they'll show you everything in that category. Now you're you're in all the listings. You're going to sort by two things. One is you sort by just in 
And another is you specify to for only sold items. So you're looking for sold items and you're sorting by just in. I think if you want to do really well-rounded research, you would pick not sorting by price at first and then sort by the different price categories. So like 50 to 100, 100 to 250, 250 to 500, 500 plus. Um, if you're only looking at the 500 plus things, yes, you're going to find the best brands, but are you going to find things that you're going to find all that often? No. And you're also going to see that that stuff's there because it's new with tags. So there are some things that like, if you can pick them up at the bins for a dollar, you don't want to ignore the whole, the whole, the whole zero to 50 category, because if your cost of goods is a dollar and you can flip something for 45, that's a great flip. So you don't want to ignore all of those items just because they're lower cost. In general, more money, more better. Am I right? Then finally you have your list and then I just go through the brands. The most recently listed item that has sold for that category will be the first thing listed. I'll go, I'll look at the brand. If it's something I already know about, if it's say Gucci, I'll probably scroll past it because I, I know Gucci is the thing I should pick up if I find it and I think it's authentic. Same with like Lululemon. There's going to be a ton of brands you know, but you're going to find there are a ton of brands you don't. There are endless, endless, endless clothing brands. It's crazy. So just keep scrolling. You're going to be able to sort through a lot of them. Like, yeah, free people. Yeah, I get it. Free people. Yeah, it's free people. I get it. Oh, Aritzia again. I get it. But you're going to come across lesser known brands like Diane von Furstenberg. You're going to come across things you've never heard of. And then when you do, you can look into those further. And so that's how I've been compiling those posts. And I think it's a reasonably good method, especially if you're mainly selling on Poshmark. But whatever your main selling platform is, is the one you want to be researching on. And you want to just sort through that category, sold, sort by just in. You could also sort by just shared um, to see what's selling right now. Um, but just in, I'd rather have items just in sold. Like if it was my closet, I'd rather have things that were just listed sell than things I just shared sell because who knows when I listed that. One more note for number three. So when you're scrolling through the brands, um, you're also going to want to scroll as you're scrolling, look for trends in that category. So for example, I found a huge thing with jackets um when i looked up jackets and when i was sorting for over a hundred dollars the biggest thing that i noticed was hey almost all of these jackets are long jackets or winter jackets or wool or cashmere or leather like i'm not seeing a lot of just regular everyday windbreakers here i'm seeing a lot of very heavily constructed jackets in this hundred dollar plus category so while you're scrolling and looking at the brands and making note of them, you're going to want to also make note of any trends you see. The other main benefit to this method is if you're sorting by just shared or if you're sorting by just in either one, you're getting information for things that are selling now, which is the only information you need. Poshmark Canada has only been around since I think May 2019. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Poshmark US has been around for like eight to 10 years, which means if you sort just by solds and highest to lowest price maybe there's something on there that sold for two hundred dollars back in 2016 that would not sell for two hundred dollars now because it's out of style because that brand's oversaturated because you know fashion's a fickle industry so the reason you want to sort by just in or just shared is because you are only interested in things that are selling now Method number two, and I call this my second favorite because it's a spinoff of the last method, but it gets, it just gets you more information and more relevant information. So this is simply to use the last method to find brands, but when you find those brands, click on the brand on the Poshmark app and it will show you the solds, well, and then sort by sold, and it will so show you the solds for that brand. And what you're looking for now is what items sell in this brand quickly, what items sell for a lot in this brand, and what items sell for maybe not as much. Because 
there are going to be bolo brands like lululemon is probably the greatest of all time the absolute winner i bow down to you your resale value is nuts but not all your stuff because they've been around for 20 years or so so certain styles of lululemon will you'll see like if you look up scuba hoodie sold you're gonna see like you're gonna see a popcorn of comps you're gonna see like 13 dollars 27 dollars $53, $128, $12. And it's going to be like, okay, maybe I don't want to pay $15 at the thrift store for a Lululemon scuba hoodie if I can only get $15 or $20 for it on Poshmark right now. So the so it's essentially the same as the last method is you want to go and find brands that are doing well, but then you want to click on that brand and look within that brand. What are the best-selling items in this brand. For example, um, there are some brands that are very specialized and you don't really want to get their non-specialized stuff. For example, Arcteryx. Arcteryx makes the best, and Patagonia, whatever, they make the best outdoor gear. So you, their jackets are highly, highly sought after and will sell for a lot. Their backpacks, their Anything to do with hiking, trekking, any like robust gear of theirs, choice. But just because Arcteryx made a t-shirt does not mean you need to pay up for that t-shirt. Because other than brand loyalty, there's nothing special about that t-shirt. It's not like super well made. It's just a, it's a cotton t-shirt. Is a cotton t-shirt. Is a cotton t-shirt. So like those, those items in Arcteryx are still only selling for... 20 to 30 dollars max so you want to know what sells in each brand like certain brands it's going to be anything and everything and certain brands it's going to be stick to their specialization so that's method number two let us move on to the final method the final method method number one and you're gonna think i'm cheeky for making this method number one but it is true it is the best it is the gold standard research method and that is to try it Sorry, that's, but it is. Hear me out. I have um, probably stated a bunch of times in this YouTube channel that what sells for me isn't gonna sell for you and what sells for her isn't gonna sell for you, this person and just cause she got this much for this item doesn't mean you are and just because he is picking up this brand all the time doesn't mean you should. And so how are you gonna find out what sells in your closet specifically? Frickin' start selling. And because that's the gold standard, you're going to want to keep your cost of goods low. So something that I do all the time at the thrift store is like, I know people say not to pick up this brand, but I've never found it before. And this is $2. I just want to see. I just want to see how it does. It's a $2 investment. I just want to see how it does. And that's worked out pretty fine for me sometimes. You're also going to come into exceptions to every brand rule all the time like people say don't pick up banana republic but if you find a two dollar banana republic 100 percent linen well constructed jacket how can you leave that behind it's like it hits all these other bolos just because it's banana republic doesn't mean don't look at it it's gonna teach you things about style it's gonna teach you what happens in your closet versus other closets it's gonna Plus, it's going to be a reflection of your style. If you pick something up that someone else wouldn't have, people who follow you might want that item more than they, people who follow that person. Like, a very good example of this, in my opinion, is the Urban Goddess Shop. She's here on YouTube. She's one of my most trusted reseller gurus. And she gets a lot of grandma style things that I see in the thrift store and I go, this is so Urban Goddess Shop. This is so Tabs. And then I leave it there because it's so, it's not, it just wouldn't do as well in my closet. People go to her closet to look for grandma style things. They don't come to my closet to look for grandma style things because I've only had so many. So um, because trying things out is the best way to learn what does best, that kind of might tie in with our last video about the $10 bag method. It also just ties in with if you can get inventory cheaply, trying it out isn't a bad idea. You want to prioritize your time. You do not want to sell things that you are not proud of, meaning damaged things. 
you do want to give everything a chance. Like if it's a perfectly good shirt, there's no reason to get rid of it or to not pick it up if it's cheap enough. And if you find it didn't sell, if you found it sit for eight months before it sold, if you found it only sold for $9, now you know, you're not gonna pick that up again. But certain things will surprise you, certain things have surprised me. And so as much as you wanna, you wanna know a Bolo brand list, you wanna know styles that are trendy, you also wanna know what you like, and you also just kinda wanna wing it. I'm not telling you to wing it, I'm telling you that by winging it, you will learn a lot. You will learn the absolute most by doing. So that is the number one research method. I recommend using all of these research methods. I didn't stop. Did you notice how I didn't stop moving my hands the whole time? That's my bad. Okay, so in conclusion, <laughs> You're going to want to use all these research methods and then you're going to want to learn your own research methods and then you're going to want to DM those to me on Instagram because I love to research. So thank you so much for joining me. Do all the things like like and subscribe and hit the bell because it will give me a little hit of dopamine and I love little hits of dopamine and it's free so you might as well. Love you guys. Bye.